Okay, this is a bit of a different video from me. It's really a study of what's been going on in the suburb where I live during the quarantine time of 2020. I do the same walk twice a day in the suburb, and I've done this walk for many, many years. But during the month of April, I started to see some very, very unusual things going on. I started to see things on the ground that I questioned, and I started to join the dots of what I was seeing. And when I started to fill in the paints between those dots, it was starting to paint a fairly ugly picture. I'll admit to you I'm strange, I'm not a normal person. If I see the local roundabout, I see a council installed spider nest via the new fencing they put round that roundabout. If I see a bunch of sparklers bound in tape at that same roundabout, I know what's going on there. But many people would see this and not understand what's going on there or the style of person that has made this device. If I see strange markings on the concrete, I understand what that's from because I was here when the big hailstorm came through the suburb in late 2018. But if you're new to the suburb, you may not understand what's created these strange marks. If I go and revisit the local abandoned hardware store, and I was in there a few months ago making a video, I can see there is a lot more damage going on there. I can see there is all sorts of different graffiti now up on the walls. I can see that whoever comes here must really enjoy damaging property and doing things that are potentially fairly risky to their own health. Even though I can't see the people who have been in the hardware store, I can start to get a feel for the style of person who has been here. The masses of junk food litter that's around the hardware store area also tells me the sort of person that is coming here and what they're eating and that may be giving us an idea of what they're up to. Going by what I see them eating, unless they're brushing their teeth at least five times a day, I can assume their oral health is in fairly poor condition. The abandoned hardware store seems to be one of the places to go to have some fairly reckless quarantine lockdown fun. The property next to the abandoned hardware store was having such a problem with hooligans doing all sorts of things around their property, they had to install a security camera system to understand what was going on. This may have solved the problem on their property, but what it's done is it's concentrated the problem back onto the old abandoned hardware store. So this does point out to you that these problems aren't just bubbled around the quarantine time, these problems have been going on for quite a period of time now. And I'm sure there are many suburbs, cities and all sorts of places around the world that have these styles of problems, but where I live, it's a little bit different. The locals like to turn a blind eye and ignore what's going on. And they do this because they don't see the bigger picture, they don't understand how everything is connected. During the month of April, during the lockdown, all of a sudden around the suburb there were lots of packets of Bic lighters. I started to see a couple, then I started to see clumps of them, and it was like a trail that went between the local shopping centre to that abandoned hardware store. So whoever is obtaining these Bic lighters, and I looked at them in store as well, they are basically using them as disposable lighters. They're using them maybe once a night, and then they're disposing of it, and then the next day they're acquiring another lighter. Apart from the endless Bic lighter packets, there were also packets of scissors laying on the ground. So whoever's grabbing this stuff, they're opening it up, dumping the rubbish on the ground. Again, the trail goes between the local store to the hardware shop. Sometimes it goes up to the dog park area. And it made me go into the local supermarket to see how many packets of scissors are for sale in there. And I started to think to myself, well, why are they grabbing these packets of scissors and just dumping the packet? This seemed to be a repeated offence over and over and over. And when it comes to scissors and the legality of carrying a pair of scissors, in particular if you're a younger person, it starts to go down a really deep bunny hole and it really starts to talk about the definition of a blade. And I think if you are caught with a pair of scissors late at night in a local park, you'd want to have a really good excuse for why you have that pair of scissors in your pants. Maybe one quick excuse would be you enjoy making fine metalwork under the moonlight. And strangely, I see plenty of that style of work in the suburb. So yes, carrying and the sale of scissors is a tricky one. You could argue this all day, all night long. And from what I see going on, I could create an excellent argument for the very careful restriction in the sale of scissors. 
And of course, then I went back to the local supermarket and I said, by any chance, have you been selling a lot of scissors to some people in the suburb? And straight away, their reply was, oh, this stuff is shoplifted. And honestly, they just wanted to wash their hands of the query about scissors, Bic lighters, and also the product called beef jerky. Ah, the beef jerky. It did take me a few web searches to understand where it lays in the equation. And I'd lost count of how many times I'd seen packets of beef jerky laying around the mess where whoever is around the suburb making the mess. But it was pretty clear to me that what was being bought was the same things over and over and over. It was the same shopping list of things that I saw being dumped around the suburb day after day after day during the quarantine times. So what I did next was I asked some friends in the suburb who have Facebook accounts because I don't have one to post some of these pictures up on the community Facebook page, and that caused a furor. What happened there was astonishing. You had people attacking those who posted these pictures. You had idiots in the suburb wanting to defend the activity that I was taking photographs of. And it's when this was going on, I thought to myself, okay then, I'm going to make this video of all these pictures that I've taken around the suburb, and tell the bigger picture by joining all the dots together so everybody can see really clearly what's going on. In this same time frame, I also noticed some really nice Gillette products where the product had been taken from packet, but the packaging had been dumped just outside the supermarket. It made me go back in to see what the RFID tags would trigger in their security system. And then I started to realize, okay, this store's got some major problems with their security system. Or should I say lack of security system? And I said to a staff person there that I know quite well, I said, look, you've got this stuff walking from store. You need to get this sorted out. And if you remember, I did speak to staff there about the scissor packets that I saw laying around the suburb. And of course, their reply to me was straight away, bang, it's being shoplifted. And now I fully understand how this can be pulled off so easily. So how's the picture looking? I've laid out the dots for you. We've joined those dots together. We've got some paint. We're starting to paint in between the dots. Do you think it's an ugly picture or do you think this is a really pretty picture of the suburb where I live? And the reason why I'm taking the time to paint this picture out is because the authorities who should be dealing with this problem are not seeing the bigger picture. I know for a fact they have been getting endless complaints about the rubbish that's being left around the suburb virtually on a nightly basis because a lot of these people are like vampires. They only come out at night time to play. And the people at the local dog park, not far from where we see accumulation of masses of rubbish, they say to me, our hose is getting shorter and shorter. What's going on? They don't understand what's going on because they don't see the bigger picture of what's happening in the suburb. A local supermarket needs to step up and help here. They need to get their security system working. I know it's dysfunctional. They need to get less scissors in the store. Why do you have so many packets of scissors for sale in the one store? And maybe you're going to have to take the step and restrict where things like Bic lighters and scissors and anything like that is sold and have them where they're behind counter and not where they can just be picked off the peg and walked straight out the store. I know that sounds painful, but as always in life, it's the minority of people who wreck it for the majority. As I said at the start of the video, all these pictures are generated during April 2020, during the quarantine times, lockdown times, in our suburb, the local skate park is out of bounds, so that maybe gives us an idea of the sorts of people that are now frequenting other areas closer to the shopping centre. There was another person I know who's also on YouTube, and I was sharing the pictures of what I was seeing around the suburb, and they said to me, wow, Leo, it's like a Scooby-Doo mystery. And I said, yeah, you're sort of right there, but to me, it's no mystery because I can start to see how everything is connected. I can start to see exactly who was up to this sort of activity. Anyway, I did say I was weird. I do see things strangely. When I see a local fence around a property, I don't notice a fence, but I do see a small deadly spider setting up its spider nest around at the local gym. Most people see the gym and all the equipment inside, but no, I see the deadly spiders, many of them living down by the steps, and I can see what they've been up to all during summer. You can if you want to, and many people do, walk around the suburb with blinkers on. They tend to want to ignore things. They don't want to look at little things that are going on and join up the dots to make the bigger picture. Sadly, I'm not wired like that. I like to look at things. I like to understand why this is happening. 
and hopefully in this video, which was made up from a whole bunch of little pictures, I've drawn for you and painted a beautiful picture of the suburb where I live in Sydney. Yet sadly, this is a picture that the majority of people who live here want to totally ignore.